All right, welcome back everybody. And uh, thank you for attending the second day of our event. Our second presentation today is about the, the newly approved hyperscale SIG. The board of directors approved this just a couple months ago and it is still spinning up. And so without further introduction, I uh, welcome Davida to the stage to tell us all about this. Go. Cool. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Davide. I'm a production engineer at Facebook. And as Rich mentioned, this talk is about the hyperscale SIG. Uh, quick agenda for today. We'll go over our goals and motivations for the SIG and what we're trying to do. We'll cover the scope of work and also what's not in scope and what may be better suited for other places. And we'll close with some words about the current status and the roadmap for the near and far future. Uh, now, this is not a Facebook talk, but I want to start with a quick intro about what we do at Facebook, because I think it's relevant for what we are trying also to do in the same. Um, I work on the operating systems team at Facebook. Uh, my team is responsible for the bare metal experience on the fleet. And among other things, we maintain CentOS on, on the bare metal fleet. Uh, CentOS runs everywhere at Facebook. It runs on all hosts and all the containers. 75% uh, of the fleet as of yesterday morning is currently running on CentOS Stream 8. Uh, the rest is running on Sun 7 and is in the course of getting updated. Um, we use CentOS as a stable base. And then for components that we want to track more quickly, we, we take backwards and we, we update them as needed. So for example, we do a lot of work internally with systemd. So for systemd, we will have an internal backward that we maintain that tracks systemd master and that we deploy. We also use things like Appel to get access to packages from Fedora and we contribute to Appel when needed. Um, we don't run the RHEL kernel. Uh, we run the upstream kernel from Linus with an internal configuration for our hardware, and our kernel folks try to contribute to the upstream kernel directly as much as possible. Uh, we use Chef for config management at Facebook. Uh, if you're not familiar with Chef, it's like, like Ansible or Puppet. Um, and we, we don't do, um, uh, and, and we do uh, incremental updates. So we don't just do a DNF update every day live from the repos, but we have a system that snapshots the repos every once in a while, and then slowly rolls the snapshot across the fleet, running the NF upgrade so we can we can test changes. Um, this is something that we used to do with Sun6 and Sun7 as well. Um, I don't want to go over these in detail because I talked about this before a lot. Uh, if you're interested, there's two talks I gave last year, one specifically about upgrading from Sun7 to Sun8, um, and Sun Stream 8 and what about, in general, what we're doing with CentOS. I also have a talk specifically about what we've been doing with Stream lately coming up at DEF CONF um, in a couple of weeks, I believe. Um, so the general theme here is that uh, all the work that we try to do is built on top of an open source foundation using open source tools. And we try to maintain as little as possible that we can internally. And we try to contribute upstream as much as possible. Uh, but even with that, there's a lot of things that you do end up having to maintain internally in one way or another, like those backports I mentioned, for example, or the configs for our kernel and things like that. So one of the things that started interest in building up something like the SIG was this idea that we would like to be able to bring out more of these things in the open. There's no reason why we should work on things like our system backward internally when other companies can also use it and contribute. And in fact, we do publish that out, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is something we had been talking about for a few years, but it wasn't really a good system for setting up something like this, for having a place within the community that different players could use to collaborate on CentOS proper. Because before Stream, CentOS was effectively just a rebuild of RHEL. So if you wanted to contribute to CentOS, you kind of had to go through either RHEL or Fedora with all that that entails. With Stream, now there's a direct channel that we can use to contribute to the distribution. And that's what made it possible to have this conversation. The other thing that happened was that we started engaging more with other companies that also do work in this space. And we, we work closely with our friends at Twitter, for example, that have more or less the same problems we have. They run a roughly similar infrastructure. They also run CentOS. They also run things like our system, the backport, already. Um, and they also run the upstream kernel. So there's a lot of room for collaboration there and commonality. And the, the idea of what we want to do here is to have a place that companies that have large scale infrastructure that need something that is stable as CentOS, but they may need to be a bit more, a bit faster moving in some places, or it might need some tweaks here and there. 
have a way to work on these components, on these faster moving things, on these tweaks in a space that can be useful for everybody, that everybody can contribute to, that everybody can use. And at the same time, try to improve the tooling about this um, in a way that can be beneficial. Uh, the other thing, as I mentioned, that we want to do is to try and bring out in-house development out into the open. There's a lot of things that companies and people might do internally within their company when they need to solve problems quickly. Um, in my experience, when you bring those things out, it leads to significant improvements in quality. So if people are working on things like package backports, if what you're building isn't a one-off internal backport, but it's something that people are actually going to use in the real world, you tend to pay attention and make it work properly and nice, and also tend to work, you have better incentives to work on things like contributing patches upstream as much as possible. So I think this creates a nice virtual cycles and helps out. So what are we actually doing here? Uh, we have built the SIG as a space to work on, on this number of things. Um, you can read the page if you're interested in the charter, and I'll go over the main points of the charter in a sec. Uh, the idea is that this is open to anybody that wants to work in the space. Right now, the SIG has members from uh, Facebook and Twitter and a few other companies. Um, anybody is welcome to join if they want to do work in the SIG. Everybody is also welcome to contribute to the SIG without joining the SIG if they'd like. And I'll have pointers later on how you can do any of that. So uh, let's talk a bit about what we're actually trying to do and what's in scope for this. Uh, the first thing, as I mentioned, is having faster moving package backwards. So the idea is that there are some components in the distribution, especially in the base part of the distribution. I'm not talking about the PEL here. But in CentOS proper, there may be some components that CentOS tracks and pins to a specific version, but that for whatever reason you want to track more closely and you want to use a more up-to-date version or you want to uh, manage in a different way. Uh, right now, the way you do that is that you, you build a package internally, you maintain it, and then you publish it and you shadow the, the distro package. Um, and this is what we do in a bunch of places here. Uh, the idea is that we can build packages that can do this, uh, that can be dropping a replacement for the distro ones and provide a better experience and we can publish those into our repository so people can opt in. And if they would like to use, say, our version of system D or whatever, they get that in from that repo. And we can do the, develop, the development for these versions um, in the open on Santos infrastructure. Uh, so I've mentioned system D a bunch, and I think it's a good example for this. Uh, Facebook does a lot of work with system D. We started getting involved with system D in um, when we did CentOS 6 to CentOS 7, because 7 was the first distro that shipped with system D by default. Um, and we use systemd a lot for system and service supervision, but also as part of the container infrastructure. Uh, we sent us ships uh, with an older version of systemd, uh, seven ships with 219. Uh, I forgot what it ships with by default. Um, but because we do a lot of work upstream in systemd proper, uh, and we want people to do work upstream, we don't really want to be in the business of contributing patches upstream and then having to backport them to the distro version of systemd. So what we do is that we took the Fedora packaging and adapted it to work nicely on CentOS. And then that's where we do our development. And whenever we make changes upstream, uh, we might roll them into this uh, packaging earlier for testing or for deployment before they get merged into our EDs. But beyond that, it is basically a straight rebuild of the Fedora packaging with minor changes for this to work. Um, this is something that is actively in production and has been in production for years. Uh, it is something that is also already available. And if you go on GitHub on that repo, we do have a few. Um, backports of packages we maintain. And the most system D is the most notable one in there. The problem with that repo is that it's, it's just a GitHub repo with a bunch of spec files. So you still need to go through the through the motions of grabbing those and building them and everything and rolling them out. Uh, it's also not terribly discoverable, although we I was actually kind of surprised to find out that there are a lot of people using these. Uh, and I occasionally get reach outs from companies I had no idea were using these contributing patches and stuff. Um, with the SIG, what we would like to do is to be able to do this development in the SIG itself. So the way this practically will work is that we'll have on GitHubCentos.org um, or on GitLab later on when that comes up, uh, we'll have a SIG branch for the systemd package, for example. And in there, we will maintain this packaging. And we'll be able to cut releases for this uh, and publish them in a repo. Uh, we plan to do this starting for 247 onwards. Uh, if you go on RPM backwards now, the latest version you see there of system is 246. Uh, we were actually in the middle of starting 247 internally uh, and delayed it for a little bit because we wanted to see if we could do this directly into the SIG. Um, and 
uh, it looks like this will probably work. So I'm hoping we'll have something to share on this in the coming weeks. Uh, if you're interested about SystemD in general and the work we do there, by the way, I link there to a talk I gave in 2019 um, at All Systems Go in Berlin uh, that talks more generally about the kind of work we do with SystemD here. Um, and if you look at the schedule for that particular conference, there were a bunch of talks from folks from Facebook uh, about our work there. Uh, in addition to SystemD, I should mention, there's other packages that we have been looking at. Uh, so things, for example, that we maintain internally at Facebook um, are things like Fusey and the standard that we tend to track more closely uh, than what's packaged in CentOS. So those are also things we might want to look at. And I'm sure our other partners in the SIG will also have packages and components they're particularly interested about in working on. Now, the other class of things that I think this is particularly suitable for is when you want to take an existing package in the distro and change something about it. Um, we, we don't hit this very often, but we hit it occasionally. And it tends to be in fairly annoying scenarios. So when we're doing, for example, the migration from send seven um, to stream eight, uh, one thing we noticed early on was that on stream eight, IP table ships by default uh, with just the NF tables back and enabled. Uh, and for a bunch of reasons, um, our kernels don't have NF tables enabled. They have the legacy IP tables backend, and our kernel folks prefer to have it that way. Um, so what we did internally after a bunch of back and forth was that we just took the, the IP tables package from CentOS and rebuilt it with the, not the configure option to enable the legacy backend, and all is good. Uh, but again, this is something that we then have to keep up and maintain internally uh, and make sure it doesn't get overridden by the distro package when there's updates. And there's not really any reason to do that internally. Um, so this is something else that we plan to distribute as part of the SIG and have published in the repo. So if people are also interested in this, they can use this package. Um, and this should be a drop in replacement because this doesn't kill the NF tables backend or anything. So you could also use both if you wanted. The other area where you see this being useful potentially is uh, if there's features that aren't directly supported by CentOS, uh, but that folks want to use, uh, this can be a way to do enablement work and enable uh, supporting packages as needed. So Facebook does a lot of work, for example, on things like Secret 2 and ButterFS uh, and BPF. Um, these are things that are supported in the distribution to a point, um, but they may not have wide support in user space. They might not have support in the rel kernel, for example, so they might not be very well tested. Uh, so this is another area where I think there is interesting potential of for features that are generally useful and generally known to be stable, uh, getting enablement in packages and then potentially using these to then write change upstream as needed. Um, now, the other bucket that takes play, the two things I mentioned before are things that I think are actively useful for production deployment. There's another class of things that I think is useful, which is having a platform that you can use to do large scale testing in a way that is production compatible. Um, so a lot of times, if you're trying to make changes in the distribution that affect multiple components, you'll end up having to rebuild a fairly sizable number of packages or a small number of packages that are very critical. The traditional way you would do that if you want to then have these available for wider testing is to do this in a copper. And you can totally do that now. You can build coppers that target CentOS. The downside of doing this in a copper um, is that, well, it's, it's a copper. So you are effectively using a repo from like some random person in some random place, uh, which may not be terribly corporate friendly. Um, but also, you are kind of at the mercy of that setup. Uh, and if this repo ends up disappearing, you're kind of screwed. Um, we, we think there is a space for doing these kind of uh, things in the SIG as well. And we plan to have a separate dedicated repo, uh, which is called experimental for lack of a better name, uh, that we will use for these, for these things. And the idea is that we can, when we are experiments that people are already testing in production, these can be landed in this repo and other folks can also test them in production using the same deployment that's already being used. And this can both inform the work that's happening, help with testing, but also let people try out new technologies sooner. So the, the example we have for this right now is the work that my colleague Matthew Almond is doing on DNF and RPM copy of write. Uh, I won't talk about this in detail because Matthew has a talk right after this, where I'll tell you all over it. But the short version is that it's a way to make package installs more efficient by leveraging the copy of write features of our systems like ButterFS and XFS. Now, because this is something that affects the packaging stack, as you might imagine, this involves changing RPM and DNF and a bunch of those tools. Um, so the idea is that uh, instead of requiring someone to either pass these packages manually or rely on a copper, we will have 
the same set of packages that are effectively already deployed in production at Facebook, available in a repo for people to consume, and have that be the source of truth. So whenever changes are made to these, and this is a fairly faster moving project that is evolving a lot based on feedback from the community, especially after the Fedora change proposal got out. Um, so we will keep this up to date and in sync. And then later on, if this ends up getting accepted, emerged, and maybe eventually makes it to CentOS proper, we'll sunset the experiment and, be, and everybody will be able to use this by default or at least straight from the distribution. Um, now, these three things I mentioned, uh, package backports, uh, configurations, for lack of a better word, and large-scale testing are all things that we have a fairly good idea of what they are. We already have targeted things we want to do. We already have people that are actively working on this. So I'm pretty confident we'll be able to deliver on these three things. Um, there's a few other things we are talking about uh, that are more in a planning stage. Uh, one thing that came up almost immediately in early discussions was, can we do something about the kernel as well? Um, now, the kernel is interesting uh, in CentOS because the, the default kernel in CentOS is the RHEL kernel. And the RHEL kernel is a very stable kernel, but it's also a very different kernel from the upstream kernel. Uh, because the way it generally works is that RHEL branches off the upstream kernel at some point, and then they backport a lot of changes and fixes and uh, features and bugs and whatever in their kernel. And this tracks for a long for a long time. So it gives you a stable base to work on, but it tends to be fairly older compared to mainline. It also tends to be not very useful if what you want to do is work on mainline. Because if you if you contribute primarily on mainline like we do, then you can't really take your those patches and deploy them on the RHEL kernel. That's that's gonna be very unpleasant because you'll have to do a lot of backward work. On the other hand, you can just run, you don't necessarily want to run like the latest federal kernel or whatever. And you can do that now, technically. There, there's packages out for that. Uh, but then you end up running essentially whatever is in Linus S3, um, which may not be appropriate for a production deployment um, in uh, even in an environment that's as fast moving as ours. So the idea is, is to maybe, maybe we can have kind of a middle ground. Maybe we can have a kernel that tracks, say, an after LTS release. Um, and then for some subsystem where there's actual work happening uh, from people, the people that say send patches for battery fast or secret to upstream can also try and get them into this kernel. And because this isn't too far off from upstream, maybe this can be done in a way that isn't too inefficient. Um, now, there's a lot of maybes in this. And the reason I'm very non-committal on this is because we literally had like a couple of informal conversations on this and not much more beyond that. So there's a lot of there's a lot to figure out here. Um, but I think there is some, some room for opportunity here, and it would be it, the ideal state for me would be that we end up with a kernel that is published that people can use, that then companies like Facebook and Twitter and others can use as the base for what they do internally. Uh, but they, they can use as a as a staging place for doing most of the development work in the open. Um, I should also point out that this isn't something we can do right now because there's a bunch of infra work that is needed. Uh, notably, my understanding is that you can't actually do kernel builds for SIGs right now in Santa Stream. So that's something that needs to be sorted out. Um, there's also some quirks related to Secure Boot um, because kernel and kernel modules have to be signed uh, with the proper keys so that Secure Boot can work. And while that isn't necessarily something we we care about directly, it is something that we, we definitely need to sort out before people can use this more generally. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I hope I'll have something to share more on this in the future. Uh, but I wanted to at least give you a preview of what we're thinking, because I saw there were a bunch of threads on the Val as well, where people were wondering if there was going to be work happening in the kernel space within CentOS. Now, let's spend a moment to talk about what's not in scope. Uh, the main reason I put this slide here is because I actually have to look this up occasionally or point people internally to it. So I figured it was worth the cover. So if you have a new package that you want to contribute that isn't in Fedora, isn't in Appel, isn't in CentOS, you should probably just contribute it to Fedora. Uh, easiest way to do that is to actually do it yourself and then get a sponsor or uh, use your maintainer powers if you're already a maintainer. Uh, and then you can branch it for Appel. Uh, you can also file a ticket and hope that somebody does it. But like, I would encourage you to do the work yourself if you can, because it's not that much work and it tends to be beneficial for everybody. Um, if you need a package in Appel that isn't already in Fedora but isn't branched, you can file a ticket on Bazilla and the maintainer um, if the maintainer is responsive, they'll branch it and do it for you. Sometimes the maintainer isn't interested in working on Appel, which is fine. And in that case, you can you can ask for help. You can ask 
to come maintain the package and do it yourself if they're okay with it. You can also ask the Fedora Appel Packager SIG uh, to help you with this, um, which is a group that has been uh, revived somewhat recently to try and help coordinate uh, packaging work within Appel, especially for packages that need to be branched, uh, but where the maintainer doesn't necessarily follow Appel that closely. Um, now, the other class of things that comes up fairly often is packages that have been unshipped. Um, for a number of reasons that I won't go in detail, uh, there's a number of packages in CentOS that people would expect to be there but aren't there. It, usually, this is things like develop packages for packages for libraries that are shipped. So you'll find that like libuv is shipped in CentOS, but libuv depel, devel is missing. Um, you to fix this, you have to file a ticket on Mozilla and follow what's brought in the wiki page, and then eventually someone will come around and do that and sort that out. Uh, likely in the next. Um, likely with some coordination with their else side of things. Uh, this has been something that's somewhat annoying, but it doesn't come up. It doesn't. It only affects relatively smaller subsets of things. So unless you're touching exactly one of those where something is missing, it's not too annoying. Uh, but this is definitely something you don't want to maintain yourself because if you want to add a develop package that is missing yourself, what you end up having to do is to rebuild the package with devel enabled, but then you have a package you don't really want to maintain to deal with internally. So I would highly encourage you to engage directly upstream for that. And finally, the other class of thing is obviously bug fixes, which for which you should just follow tickets on Bugzilla or engage directly with upstream or even better send patches. Um, and that is by far the better, the better option here. Um, now, let's talk a bit about where we are with all of these. Uh, SIG was approved by the board on January 13. Uh, we started spinning up resources uh, almost immediately. We have, uh, we now have an IRC channel. We have a set of Koji tags. Uh, we, by, by we, I mean mostly I spend a bunch of time trying to learn how the infra actually works uh, because it wasn't too familiar with how stuff worked. Um, and as of this morning, I think I figured out how to do builds uh, directly from this Git. So I think uh, we'll be able to have something delivered pretty soon. Uh, in, in the short term, what we plan to have is, as I mentioned, these branches on GitHubCentos.org for all the packages that we're going to work on. So you'll see on packages like systemd, a branch show up like CHS, SIG Hyperscale, or CHS, SIG Hyperscale Experimental, depending on where the changes will land. And that's where we'll do all of our work. Um, we might also keep some staging Git repos on Pegure um, if we need like a repo for um, incrementally testing stuff, for example, for something like systemd, but we haven't decided yet. We then will have two package repositories, one for main packages, so things that are suitable for production deployments and should be dropping replacements, so things like systemd and IT tables that I mentioned. And then we'll have an experimental package repositories for things that people may not want in production, but they that could be useful for testing things and getting an early preview of things to come, like the RPM cow stuff. Um, things we are looking in the future are the, the kernel stuff I mentioned before, uh, we are also looking at uh, engaging with the cloud SIG and seeing if we can get pre-built cloud images with the hyperscale repos and the hyperscale software already enabled. Um, so it would be nice, for example, to have a cloud image that you can spin on EC2 uh, with already the most up-to-date version of systemd, for example. Um, that is something that we'll start engaging with the cloud SIG after we actually have repos and packages published, because there's not really much point in doing it before than that. Um, and then, yeah, I'm sure more stuff will come up. Uh, and I, I, I should reiterate, this isn't just me and this isn't just Facebook. This is a bunch of different people from various companies. Um, so I'm sure other folks will have things they're interested in contributing. Uh, a bunch of folks are also listening to this now in the chat and then can answer your questions if you if you have questions on what, what we're doing and what's going on here. Um, and I will close uh, with some links so the page for the SIG there that you can find that I mentioned before, we have a channel on Freenode on Pound Santos Hyperscale that we're using to coordinate work. Um, we are also going to have uh, formal meetings uh, starting Feb 17. Uh, I have a PR up for the Santos calendar to get this added to the schedule. Uh, formal meetings are what we'll use uh, for, act for deciding actual SIG business. So things like if somebody wants to join the SIG, uh, the formal meeting would be a good place to introduce yourself and talk a bit about what you want to do. Um, we also have an issue tracker on Pegger that we're using um, for for tracking both admin six stuff, like setting up the RC channel and whatever, but also for tracking actual work. 
uh, and having a place to keep things. Uh, because people are in various time zones, this just makes things a lot easier for everybody. Uh, and finally, you can also just post in CentOS Devel, and we already send us Devel and are happy to reply there. There isn't a mailing list dedicated to this effort yet because there you know, really seem to be much of a point. Um, but feel free to use any of these channels. You're also welcome to hit me up or any anybody else in the team directly, and we can answer your questions. And of course, more than happy to answer questions here. Um, yeah. So just a reminder that some people are watching this on YouTube. So if you could possibly go ahead and answer the questions uh, audibly as well, that would be very helpful. Of course. So uh, we have uh, the question, we had an earlier question about what other technologies might be included eventually in the SIG, what's in scope? Uh, so I, I, the reality is that I don't know, to be honest. Uh, like the things I put in here are the, I, the things that I know people are actually working on. Um, I mentioned tangentially earlier, there are a number of packages at Facebook that I know we maintain internally that people don't really like to maintain internally and that they would love to be able to do in a more collaborative way. So things like Fusey uh, and Z-Standard are the things that immediately come to mind. Um, I, I don't really know other things that could come up at the top of my head right now, um, uh, but I'm sure we'll have stuff. Uh, one thing I will mention that we have discussed occasionally internally that I still kind of want to put out is the tuning we have for doing uh, rolling OS updates. Uh, so for doing snapshotting of the repos and the slow rollout of them. Uh, that went through a bunch of iteration. The latest iteration is written in a way that it could be potentially be open sourced. So we one thing we are trying to figure out internally is whether that whether that can be open sourced in a form that is actually useful for people, basically. Um, so if and when that happens, that is also likely something that we would put out as part of the SIG because it seems like a natural fit. Oh, and sorry, and the question was if there were other technologies um, or things that we were planning to do in this space. Did I miss any questions in the chat or do people have any further questions? All right, well, thank you very much, Davida, for, for this great presentation. And uh, we do encourage all of you to uh, to uh, join the IRC channel and get involved in the conversation and see where you can help. Um, David may have another question here. Sure. Um, are there specialized solutions that you're looking at, like ML training acceleration? Um, not in particular, but if there's something specific you have in mind or that you would like to collaborate on, by all means, feel free to hit us up. Um, like I should, one thing I should say is that there isn't any, there isn't any particular restriction, at least from my point of view, in what should go into this SIG. So basically anything that is useful and doesn't have a better place to be in, like doesn't have a dedicated SIG or doesn't have a better place to contribute on, as long as you're willing to do the work, I'm more than happy to help host it within the purview of the SIG. And then if later it comes up that there's a better place for it, we can figure that out. Um, nobody here is an expert on all things. So by all means, uh, I would personally love to see people get engaged and work on things that we haven't necessarily thought of. And the same is true of any SIG. Uh, SIGs are, they don't have uh, top-down leadership in that sense. If you have something that you want to work on in any one of the SIGs, show up and propose it. All right. Well, thank you again for this uh, for this great presentation. Thank you. We will be resuming the next presentation in about thirty minutes. Our next presentation is uh, let's see, speeding up DNF and RPM using copy on write. So please join us in the hallway track for ongoing discussion and join us back on stage in thirty minutes. Thank you again. <laughs>